Punka mid. Uh, they're showing that they're just able to give a lot of looks. And the way that it works in drafting is if you're the team that has the most varied draft, like you can do things that the enemy team can't or you're willing to, then you're going to have quite an advantage going in. Like you're picking these heroes like Kunkka mid that nobody else runs. That's huge for your team. You're doing stuff that nobody else is doing. And it's not easy because you probably haven't practiced against this. So you don't know the style or how it's going to go. Like nobody plays games like that. Nobody, no. nobody practices. If it usually gets to the point where it's like 17 to 42, one team will just say like, GG. Nobody ever tries to scrim out those games. It's just like, all right, it's over. And so most of that time is just spent towards like, who has more experience playing those kinds of games in actual matches. Mm -hmm. yep, because there you ET. Go. There's ET. Goodbye. We'll be seeing that again. But man, what a fun story that we've had throughout the entire tournament, huh? You saw Rogers Kunkka come up. Maybe that's what gave them the idea to run that bad boy Kunkka again and then just really been performing. You think we're going to see a lot more Kunkkas now Ten after those kind of huge performances or still niche, niche pick? I think it's still Five kind of just remaining. something a little bit more limited uh, and towards that. Because if you see these heroes, like these gyros, you have to think to yourself, well, what works well against them? We keep sure. seeing these heroes over and over again. Obviously, the basic counters to it don't really work. Like this idea that Brewmaster counters Omni Knight, like I see it, but at the same time, I still see Omni run over Brew every single game. So you need a better idea than that. Like, so what's the next level? And in these tournaments, it's hard because you have to figure them out on the go. You don't have time to practice it. No one's going to scrim against you. So you have to theorycraft these things. And it's cool that they were able to just say, I think the Kunkka works. Let's go with it. Absolutely. Well, Winter Wyvern going to be grabbed out first from Team Ten Liquid, seconds. kind of the standard support hero that we've been seeing here. Not going to be followed up with that Winter Wyvern Five Omni combo seconds. that has been so famous throughout Dream League. But here we go, Sand King and Lone Druid instantly picked up. Don't blame them for that. Yeah. Do you take Wyvern Slaughter then? That was the combo that we saw uh, be really popular through pretty much two tournaments in a row. I still really like it here. I know EG went with it and uh, didn't do as well earlier, but remaining. we've talked about that combo. I mean, you guys talked a lot about that combo. I haven't seen it winning too much. Uh, I'd rather you get something like a Witch Doctor here to be able to put a leash on that lone druid. They need to find some way to stop wow. that from going ham. And but, then Insta-Pick Lifestealer. Yeah, yeah, he got banned out in the second phase in the last game, and they, uh, they want something against that druid. Yeah, it's really nice against lone druid. You get on top of them. If you have some sort of vehicle as well, uh, Sand King doesn't really do too much to it either. But they're going to ban out the Chen. You want to give this hero as good of a life as a laning phase as possible. Yep, and this is Liquid making adjustments. Neither of these two heroes, the Wyvern, of course, being very surprising, neither were touched in that last draft. Yeah, so you, they banned the Sardar because the Sardar Lifestealer, of course, one of the better combinations that yeah. you can run. Uh, like, definitely good with the Winter Wyvern, yeah. too. It allows Lifestealer to get that early Roshan, too. And... If you just stun onto the Lone Druid, there's almost nothing that you can do against it. Like, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of BKB breakers anymore in Dota, which yep. makes Lifestealer really nice in this meta right now. Best BKB breaker right now, probably Bane. He's already banned out, so yeah. pretty hmm. good idea there. All right, well, this should be the one that kind of reveals Team Secret's hand coming up here. Batrider taken out. Pretty nice. Liquid fans in the audience hoping for a Game 5 on this one. That rider would have been uh, nice against the life seal, but then against Secret, who's banning it out. Is it the other way around? Like Bat gets, it's pretty hard for yep. life seal to play against Bat. But you're talking, or, uh, you're talking about things like at least control through that, through that rage, through that. That. It's generally viewed as being get jumped right anyway. Yeah. So Liquid still need their, their jump for. Ten seconds remaining. I'm trying to think right now. Normally, you want some kind of reliable stun or something that gets you as close as possible. I would have thought like Clockwork or something would have been okay for Liquid, considering uh, it's not bad against Lone Druid. You can just lock him in. But I think you would want something slightly more reliable than that. Ancient Apparition? Well, sure. Uh, we've been talking about how that's the kind of go-to counter to Winter Wyvern right now. Just kind of eliminate all those heals, but not quite sure. I mean, there's a lot of heroes that can get up in that hero's face and just eat him up. They might aggro with this. They did last time they played, uh, if I recall. They did brew AA uh, plus against EG and just ran them over. Oh. This is actually one of the few times, too, when Brewmaster gets through the second phase of Bant. Yep. I don't know. I think he's fallen out of favor a little bit, Toby. People are sobering up to him. <laughs> it's a little joke for you kids at home. I think so, too. Thank you. So, four positions that work. 
back in the past was like Ricky, but we haven't seen that hero in a really long time. Uh, I know the Chinese really like Nyx. They just grab a Nyx, uh, run and go. You find a running in that three position. Yeah. There's not a lot of options left over. Ooh, you know, the famous combo Liquid did earlier in the league? The Puck Lifestealer combo. I believe Fog called it the uh, Life Pucker. The, the life puck, pucker. He goes in, he takes your life. What about Rubik here? For okay. Liquid? <laughs> uh, Rubik's not bad. <laughs> All right. So they take Night Sucker. Then maybe they're mid or they're off. That's the tide. There is a turn hunter. Wow, okay. Oh We're just chaining these picks now. Well, once again, Blitz, I think you talked about this in the last draft, that uh, Secret's just going heavy into the team fight as we go into the draft. Yeah, and Liquid looks like they want to try to split things a little bit more and make things hard for Secret. But they also, when you have a hero like Lifestyler, Nahaz, you need a one position that can shove out the waves, yep. which is why we see heroes like Queen of Pain, Storm, uh, Puck, just something that insta gets rid of the creep wave. Because Life Sealer can't do that for you. And if your one position can't do that, your mid has to. Are you worried that they don't really have a great way to get Life Sealer into the fight? Uh it's a little bit of a concern right now, but that's what I imagine that's what I imagine uh, MC's hero is gonna be. Like they might just do something like puck off. They also need a hero though, if they do get aggroed or they get run at, because SK plus A is such a kill combination. Like that's a kill squad. AA is often thought of as kind of a passive laner, but Cold Feet plus Chilling Touch is really nice paired with Sand King. Like, that's almost always a kill, because Sand King will get his Caustic, you'll slow him down, you just chase people down. It's almost always a kill. So where do you think these secret supports are going to be early in the game? Do I think, think they, they aggro, or they, they can they move around Because they have this dead hero in this Lone Druid and this Tidehunter. Like, there's this concept that was coined a while ago, it's called Dead Heroes, where you essentially never have to help these heroes, because their static laning phase they don't get beat by anybody, really. They're just okay. Life Stealer used to be thought as one. Uh, and then we kind of went away from this meta, but it all sort of... Dota almost always just like circles back to what it used to be. Ten seconds remaining. So you see the Brewmaster actually is banned out by Secret. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. You know, one, one ideal option that would get the Life Stealer into the fight, offer you a little bit more team fight to answer the abilities of Secret. Could have been really problematic as well for Secret to have that bear work. You remember the old counter that, uh, I think it was Dendi that always hit it with the Tinker, uh, sending the Lone Druid bear into the air all the time, basically yeah. no presence inside the fight? That is generally the counter, and it's nice to play, but they need something with instant jump on the side of Liquid now. Yep. If they, if they want to utilize it like this, I mean, you can still play a normal game, but... How does Secret actually play the jump game? game against the Tinker too. Like it's not like they got the nine stalker for the flying vision. How do they keep up with them? Is it just SK Blink? Uh, uh, it'll be SK Blink plus they have Lone Druid. Once you get Radiance, it kind of works both ways. Like Tinker will shove in the waves into you, but Lone Druid will do the same. Like he'll harass you with the Radiance and force the Tinker around the map. And then you can sort of predict where the Tinker's gonna go based off of that. Like if you imagine in the mid game scenario, Lone Druid has Radiance. He pushes out a wave, then Tinker goes to go shove that back out. Then there's two people smoke behind that bear and they just grab a kill. And it's even easier when bear eventually gets Aghanim Scepter because you don't have to be there for that anymore. Your bear's just like a hitman. What? what? Sick! Oh, I Wait love a minute, where does this... So is this... That's, a, that's three position. Three position... No, 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 no. Is it three position Night Stalker or three position Phoenix? Uh, I think it's a three Phoenix. Wow, this puts up a whole new problem for Team Secret. They got a lot of magical damage, but what they don't have is somebody that's going to be able to hit that egg. Now they're kind of put into the situation. Do they want to draft around that, or keep going with their original idea and just deal with it? Maybe they take something like Quop. I don't know. They need they need some like mobile catch mid. Yep. Storm Quop. I was, I was just, so like, curious scales. whether you were going to say Storm. I mean, I think that hero's like... It has issues, but it's still okay. Or you even take something like Sniper and just like have your team frontline for you. Because you the other thing you need is something that can chase the Tinker into the trees. You guys are all wrong. There's one hero that can do all of it. Like Death Prophet? Nah, bro. Zeus. Nimbus Zeus. Think about it. Yeah, but you're going to be really bad against Life Stealer and Phoenix. Nah. Those heroes will crush you. Nah. <laughs> nah. Think about it, bro. Anyway. He, he did think about it. <laughs> <laughs> When they pick Zeus, I'm going to look like a genius. Right. Oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> what? So they, they can either run the, the Warden or the Druid in mid. 
Hey, I like more this. flexibility of Secret Slaney. You know, they get to follow up, kind of have a global presence. They get somebody to be able to hit that egg. I think that's a great uh, pick. I mean, we just haven't seen it that much on Team Secret. I yep. love the, I love the BT interaction as well with the lone druid. You're gonna get so much like so much maneuverability across this map. Yeah, it feels so greedy though on the side of Secret. You got two heroes that you really have to invest a lot to get online. But isn't that what they always do, right? Like you have those two heroes that work, the one hero who doesn't, and he catches up later when right. space is created. Gentlemen, need some predictions here. Are Liquid able to even up the series, or do Secret take that commanding 2-0 lead? Tell me. I want to go with the Arc Warden. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with the Arc Warden. Remaining. Uh, I'm going to go with the Tinker. Five I think Liquid remaining. takes this, evens up the series 1-1. Ooh, up to me, huh? You went with me last time, and we, Ooh, I was correct. <laughs> Phoenix is not a great hero, though. Ah! He's great in this you, game. You, you All right, I'll, I'll go with you, Blitz. Ride or die. Time to be two for two. Homies forever. Blitz, I think you have me convinced. I'm going to go liquid. No, I switch, switch back, switch back. Switch back. <laughs> Put me on secret. I stand alone. I'm no. going to pull right. the slacks on game two. No. Let's go game two. Secret trying to take this series by the throat. Liquid trying to get back in it. One more time. Here are Odie, Pixel, and Fogged. Thank you very much, Nahas. And yeah, we're ready to go. Game two, Secret versus Liquid. And we're seeing more new heroes. This yeah. Phoenix being picked up. And it looking to be the, indeed the core Phoenix from Mind Control. Yeah, we had it up, and then mid one Arc Warden gets we had through. last game. Now we get Phoenix and Arc Warden. This is a grand finals. It is. And this is what happens, right? Secret and Liquid are giving us quite the delight, indeed. So, what do we reckon about these new heroes being brought to the fray? The the Arc Warden and the Phoenix. Talk about them. But what what are we liking? What are what are you worried about? I'm worried that the Tinker can go very out of control. He's quite good versus both Arc Warden and Lone Druid if, once he gets to that super late game status because he can laser across the board versus all of them and give them that miss rate. Oh, let's see. So that is one of the big factors coming in. And then they have, I think Liquid really drafted to deal with this Lone Druid. That was a big prioritization from them. The Phoenix, as well as the Tinker, as well as the Life Sealer, these three heroes can be quite good versus it. And we've seen what Ace can do when he has his hands on this Lone. Let's get ourselves with the rundown at the team sorted. Miracle on his Tinker for Liquid GH. Support Knight Stalker moving around the map. Kuro will be there with the saves on Winter Wyvern. Matumba Man, Lifestealer. And up on top at the moment, Mind Control, position three, Phoenix. A secret smoked up at the moment. We've got Puppy AA, mid one, Arc Warden, Father Tide Hunter, Yapsaw on Sand King. And down at the bottom, we have Ace, Lone Druid. We've seen his Lone Druid a few times. It's very, very impressive. Up top, though, Secret of Hunting. The smoke dispelled. They know someone's there. They find the door. They catch him. Mid Icarus dive. And that, without a doubt, will be your first blood and going to mid one as well. Nice bit of extra gold to kick him off in the mid lane. That ward did not see them, actually, because it's just along the cusp. I think he got vision of them at the last possible second since they have it placed right there. And it's actually blocked by a tree if you actually switch the. Uh, the vision, so. Yeah, right, just at that smoke just bad. I think he would have just, just seen the one. perfect. Yeah, look at that. You yeah. can see that he probably got vision of them at the last possible second. All right, nice way for, for the Arc Warden to start the game. Uh, they'll see the lanes. It looks like they're, they're trying to get the, the maybe the Ace first of the Phoenix, but with that Phoenix, it's going to head down. But are they trying to get the a bear away from it? What, what, what sort of lanes are Secret looking to try and get on the side? They're just trying to avoid the Life Stealer. Okay. On the side of Secret for the versus that Lone Druid. But look at the rotations coming out. Mazda's yeah. running right back up toward top. We might see some musical lanes. Kuroki is parked behind mid. He's waiting to try to go for a courier snipe here. And we have the 2v2 in the mid lane. It is a double ranged hero coming out from Secret though. So they should come out ahead in this one. But at the beginning, Miracle is 3-1. And, and Matu's going to get pressured pretty hard by this though. Because there's a sinking up there too. Out comes the courier. Courier's got the ward down. He's going to get it. To get it. And that is the courier gone. One more hit. And Let's get it. the Wraith Pan delivered. And they're diving on it. Mid one. Three heroes moving on to mid one. Uh oh, mid one. He's dead. I'll get the courier. I'll get the kill as well. Laser and rocket from Miracle to finish off mid one. Puppy will be fine. Patience from Kuro. And Miracle's a bit of an awkward position. Mid one's going to TP straight back in. Look to try and beat into Miracle, but Miracle will be fine. Gets himself back behind the Crete Wave. GH a little less so. Flux onto him. TP across as well from Yapsil. The only way Seeker can really get kills in their lanes is Yapsor. He is the key to the movements around the map for them. Him and AA, or AA alone is not enough. They always have to have the sanking there for the kills, unless some big mistake kind of happens. 
My control should be pretty happy with uh, the way that the lane setups are happening. Phoenix versus Tidehunter, he should be able to get a good chunk of farm here versus the Anchor Smash since he's ranged. He doesn't get affected. GH. Uh, it's taking a lot here. Caustic this chilling touch. He is surely going to pop one more touch, would do it, and Yapsaw can find it. Is he could get another. Top oh. lane, Kuro coming in with a wraparound, looking towards Ace, trying to keep the bear off him with the slow. Ace actually did not get hit once by that Arctic Burn on his main hero. And now he's going to turn. He's going to force Kuro back out of this. He knows he's level one, he's only got that one skill to pop. Yep. Kuro will be forced back. No. The lanes, as you say, Liquid managing to get their life stealer against the Lone Druid, and Secret will leave the lanes, as it were, on the side. Yet to make any sort of further switch around. This is a pretty nice game for Tinker. The one thing is that the Arc Warden also can work in that factor version because of the spark rates. You can put them all around along the tree lines later on in the game, and you can have that as a scout, but this happening is a big disaster. Arc Warden is one of those heroes that if you actually die too many times early on, it's very, very difficult for you to catch back up because the aggression is just going to keep running at you. So it's, a, I mean, GH is doing a great job of that, and I think he, we're going to keep seeing that happening for a bit with this Night Stalker Tinker matchup versus him. Uh, Secret do finally move the lanes once again, taking Ace down here, yep. away from the live stealer. And uh, you have saw hunting down mind control, seeing if you can spot him out in the trees. <laughs> well, three has the Aquarius Dive mid, mid lane again. This liquid aggression between the three of them coming in mid each and every time. And Look they're getting kills every time they move in. Again, Matu instantly switches down toward bottom. He sees the lone druid there. He doesn't want to stand 1v1 versus a tight hunter either, because that's not a great matchup. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, he's going to miss the forest it. strike, and Matuma is here, ready to punish him for that misplay. As Matuma Man, as soon as he turns up to the lane, gets himself a kill. He's probably pretty thankful there. Yaps are almost coming in. He's trying to go for that, like, you know, outplay catching the mid Icarus dive, but not expecting Matu to make that quick rotation down. Look at this as well. GH and Kuro in position to dive if Ace comes forward too far. He doesn't have Savage Roar online just yet. He's got to be careful. And he is keeping himself quite close to that tower, so it makes it hard for the supports to make the move. They'll back off. We secure both the bounty runes down here. Bada should have a good game this time around. 19 and 5 last hits on Tidehunter. Pretty lovely. And I see it 15. 15 denies. Yeah, 15 denies. So first night time's kicking in. See how much pressure GH can put alongside with Miracle. Oh, Miracle finds a nice regen rune bottom. How lovely for himself. Back towards Lone Druid. Trying to go for his bear here. Back to my man. Ready to come in, but Savage Roll forces him back. GH does get the slow with the void. And they should be able to claim this bear here. Can he deny it? That gold. Oh, oh he, he gets can, the Ace! Oh my God. You're not getting that 300 gold, he says. They want him now. They're like, you it, deny it? He'll summon a new one. And he's with okay. that, he's fine. Yapsa and Puppy turn up. They're ready to turn this around. Looking towards Kuroki. He's been left behind. Secret jump in. Ace getting the kill as well. Denying that gold from Liquid. Drawing them in and picking up a kill. That was pretty sick. We've seen Ace's Lone Druid multiple times here and it has been up there as one of the best if not the best it's a, it's a hard contest between him and Matuma man even though liquid did lose that last game mid lane looking for miracle play mid lane the stun miracle trying for the tp out knows he can't make it secret find the kill yep. every time when yapsor can show up like i was mentioning before that's when they can get those kills but now liquid they are smoked up they're looking to get the wraparound into the mid lane when Miracle respawns, they will probably try to go for mid one here. Puppy, though, walking into them. He tanks the gank. Yapsaw's there to try and help out. A Burrow Strike and mid one looking to turn. Has the flux onto GH. GH backing up, standing close to Kuro. Raves down, blocking off the path. Liquid have to be careful with their retreat. They're not going to get GH out of there. GH goes down. Mind Control's come through. He's bringing mid one down very, very low. He's trying his best to finish off this Arc Warden. Gets another Spirit out onto him. And Mind Control will be able to claim the mid one kill. Kuroki's able to deny himself to the Ancient, so Yapsaw can't find that. Mind Control picks up a second. He's got a double. What a rotation. Can he, can he get more out of this? He doesn't have any more Yeah, both of his spells are down for a long time. Yeah. And Yapsaw shining up will live, but indeed, Mind Control turning up like that, getting two kills. Matuma Man and GH have found the bear. Savage Roar from Ace peels them off it. They're still trying to chase it, though. Again with another Void. That Arcane Rune for GH helping them chase down Ace's bear. Mind Control swoops in to surround it, and this time, there won't be a deny. The gold's there, I believe GH claiming the final touch. 300 gold into his bank. Pada completely ignored in this game. Just sitting top by himself farming. Going to go for GH though. Very nice early on. Puppy as well. Fada can make a good attempt at Kuro's life. Kuro trying to fly himself away. We'll get over the tree line. And Fada 
We'll not quite be able to find him for now. Does have phase boots, so this lane getting even scarier for any members of Liquid to come in mid lane, mid one, Dove upon. They'll get the kill, cost them GH's life. Yep, so if he can chase down Miracle, he does have Burrow Strike back up. Playing around with it for now. But he will not make an attempt. Miracle will be fine. Bottom lane, mind control, and Matuma Man also stepping up the aggression. As soon as Liquid go mid, Liquid also make a go down bottom. They're finding the lone druid and they'll take it. Mind control with these movements, getting some crucial kills for Liquid. Yeah, the core Phoenix, he's turning up every single time. That mid lane rotation was the big one, but now bottom with Matu being able to pressure the lone druid. Ace really having some trouble here. He doesn't have a resummon for 85 seconds either. So he's going to be just a ranged, ranged very weak hero for the next minute or so. Yeah, Liquid, as we've seen themselves, a team very comfortable with playing the lone druid. They, of anyone, are going to know how to deal with it. And this is certainly the way. Putting this amount of pressure on, slowing down the Midas Radiance timings that are so crucial for the bear to get. And taking his lane away from him. They'll find the tower. They swoop forward looking for Yapsor. Does still have a burrow strike to break away. And uh, there are other members of the team around. Fada's going to head in with the wraparound. And this Phoenix has been baited in and taken out. Mind control punished for chasing just a little too far down there. That was beautiful by by Fada, just sitting in the trees on, uh, my control had no idea that he was there. So that burst damage, Ace, trying to TP out. Is the burst there? Oh, just survives. Very, very close indeed. And efficiency as well from Ace. Doesn't even TP back to base. TP's towards top, Sal's up, and he's ready to continue to farm. At least alone, 20 seconds and the bear will be back. On the lane, Matuma Man not going to have too fun against this tied down bottom mid lane miracle. Mid one. That was a solo kill. Yeah, he's got the tempers double out. A lot of damage potential with the three levels in flux. And miracle's out alone. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Eight for eight. These are the kind of games we expect here from these two teams in the grand finals. Just bloodbath. Liquid trying to move in again on top. Back to Ace, but Ace has friends. He's got backup, Yabsa and Puppy. Selim with the burrow strike, GH will be in trouble as the cold feet. He gets propped. He could find another. Mid lane miracle. Being gone upon by mid when he doesn't have the double out. To be a little careful. And uh, indeed, we'll just be able to poke a bit at miracle. Miracle will be fine. Mm -hmm. CS between the two, 36 for nine on mid one, 30 for nine on Tinker. So very close in this mid lane. Yeah, I think we're going to see uh, Matu probably, as soon as he gets that armlet, he's probably going to infest inside my control. They're going to lo start looking for either the Lone Druid or the Arc Warden with those infest bombs. Infest plus Icarus Dive makes it pretty easy setup to actually go for that. Kuroki just hanging bottom, babysitting the Tumba Man in case he gets gone upon. Mm -hmm. Mid one, very low in this mid lane. He's feeling confident with Yep, so being around the tanking and yeah, they'll tag team out. In fact, mid one heads back to base. Yep, so Yep, so gets the lane. He's level six on this. Yeah, tanking. I was about to say he's like the earliest level six of the supports in the game. Like we mentioned, he is the kill hero though in the side of secret. So every time he does show up, they do have pretty good chances to kill people and they do go for a smoke up. But lots of liquid is grouped up and like I mentioned, instantly they jump into the infest once the armlet is finished. Let's see what Fada can set up or find. He may just have to run as soon as the knight is summoned. Secret, no, this is not the fight for them. Back away. Very minimal, like, catch and disable on the side of Liquid, though. Pretty much just the Arctic Burn plus the Night Stalker, really, to go for stuff. And I guess, you know, Icarus dives slow. But again, looking for round two. Wrapping around toward mid. He is spotted by Ward, though, so Miracle. Unlikely to get caught by this top now. Savage Roar, pushing back GH. Mind control, still with Matuma Man inside him. They'll jump out, look towards Ace. Ace is gone. The Supernova as well, making it pretty much impossible for Secret to get anything in return out of that trade as they have to have to let Liquid get away with that. This opens up the map now for the support of Liquid, Kuroki, trying to get his level 6 bottom, but he is getting stalked by Tidehunter and AA. He's going to be fine hiding in the trees here, though. Fada just getting richer and richer, second highest on the net worth with this Tidehunter. Yeah. He's Both. had a very, very nice lane to start with. It denies... <laughs> Kuroki actually denied the catapult bottom from Fada, and Fada gives him an XD. <laughs> yeah, so top getting got on. Has no stun, has no sandstorm either. Matsuma Man really stepping it up with these kills. He, he got the farm early on, and he's getting heavily involved with the backup and mind controls Phoenix. 
some some uh, nice little exchange of words between Kuro and Fada there during that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So far, 12 minutes in, 9 for 10. It's. Is there a team that you would say is coming out with the upper hand of these this lane? The thing is that both these teams want to like, kind of yeah. take it to the late game. Because Tinker toward the late game and then Arkhorn and Lonejord. I think Liquid probably wants to keep the uh, the pace up a bit more. And mid one with the Midas out. Top lane, Double GH. Actually going GH. In a lot of trouble here. Now, would you count the Ice Blast? But they're chasing that map. And they'll continue to do so. No let up for GH as he's rooted, taken out. Yep, so secure is the last hit. Bottom lane, Fada. <laughs> He's having a bit of fun with Kuro down there, was teasing around with the Ravage. He's got a bit of a translation there too. Uh, Kuroki actually said, you didn't expect that to Fada when he denied the catapult there. Thank you, Knoxville. So my, Midas will be the choice of item for my control. To keep up with the level, since he's going to be running around and setting up a lot of those ganks with the Icarus dive. And it's just an, an item that most people do tend to go for on the Phoenix, since you really want levels. And here we go. Infest again. That bring him down. Join forces with Kuro mm -hmm. and GH. Radiant and make the move standing. for the big cause. Scam from secret just on the mid. How many minuses is that in this game? That's three, I think, a total. Yep. Soon. Lone Druid has one. Arc Warden and Phoenix will have it. The finale one. Now I'm going to find Fada here. He does have the hood and he has got the shrine by him as well. We'll see if they have the damage to bring him down. It's a bit of a hard hero to go in upon. Ravage comes in into the ice bars, the power as well. Oh, I, that was questionable at the at the best. Going on the tight hunter like that. Under a shrine as that, well. A little ambitious from Liquid and it, it hurts them. They that's, lose both mind control and Matumba Man for that effort. That's an extremely costly one too because it's. Ace pushing the mid lane during all that, and that slows down a lot of the momentum. With the Infest being on cooldown now for quite a long time, losing two of their core heroes. It was a Ravage expended, but oh, absolutely, absolutely worth, worth yeah. yeah. Father, I'm a, a surprised we didn't get an XD out from that one. <laughs> That's a hit level 12 as well. 1300 towards the Blink Dagger. Oh, GH and Matu, they found the bear top. They're trying to bring it down. They get in range for the open wounds. It's only level one open wounds. He does get oh, close he for does. it. Do they have the damage? They should. Yep, they do. 300 gold for Matu. Yapsil comes in. Finds the Burrows try. They've got that combo. They're set up for the Ice Blast. Make the connection onto GH and with the Gush slowdown as well. They should be able to bring him underneath that threshold. Yapsil claims the kill. Closer and closer towards that blink. But to my man thinking about kills in return. But this big old tide, as he looks towards him, is a little traumatized after what he remembers happening down bottom and will respect Fada. Yeah, this blink for the Sanking is going to be there soon. Yep, so 5, 2, and 7. Again, a very strong opening from him. 1,900 gold towards Blink Dagger. Yeah, 12 of the uh, 13 kills he's been involved in. Don't be expected, though. He is, you know, the 4 roll with that. The pretty much only stun that they have besides Ravage in the early game. Mid one will be going for the standard Arc Warden build, the Maelstrom, after that Midas. Getting closer and closer to that one. And Matu going for his signature Lifestealer build. Just armlet into Desolator. Usually just tends to go for that heavy minus armor since so he can actually siege buildings since Life Seer is not a great tower hitter objective taker. Let's him not only take Roche but buildings as well. A couple more creeps and mind control. He'll have his Midas. So we'll be able to continue the scaling game on this Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as you say, mid one farming a treat and so so is Miracle. Both cores. Both mids and at a very similar pace. GH is scouting out secret, but he's under vision of a ward. He's getting wrapped around on. And yapsil has got the connection. Comes in with the power strike. GH punished for this one. Look at that defensive ward by secret. Very unexpected. Liquid had no idea that would be there. But all the wards coming out from Liquid are coming out from secret are in the defensive position. If you look around that mid lane, they're really prioritizing defending mid one's farm. Comes to the bouncy room. I'll get it. The bear's able to pick it up. Tries to go for a bit of a go onto the bear, but no follow up. Puppy actually with an invis. See if he can do anything with this one. He's like, oh, no bounty rune. <laughs> 14 for 10. This is. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting who becomes the bigger issue this game the Arc Warden or the Tinker. Both absolute nightmares if they get their items. Mid lane, mid, mid one, one. Though, gets jumped on. They've got the combo. Matuma Man brought in by Mind Control. Ice Blast flies through. Yeah, Absorb will go down as well. Liquid, keep everyone alive. Mind 
control healing up the team. Get two quick kills, big ones as well, taking down mid one, any chance they can to slow down this Arc Warden's farm. It is a pretty scary game for the Arc Warden whenever those situations happen. I mean, Icarus dive into an Infest Bomb, he's gonna die 90% of the time there unless he's got heavy backup from his team. And all the while, Miracle's been just casually farming in the jungle for quite a while. He's got the blink on the way toward that Agonim's next. Now look at this tower as well, Liquid. Yep. Objective gaming. Ace top. Also was pushing for a while. How's he doing on the relic? Very, very close very to close. having that relic. So much slower though than sure. his recent games. It's not the record timing, but yeah. it's still it's still a strong time. He was pressured a lot. Liquid definitely put a lot of focus on him in this game. In that trade-off though, you see Fada's farm. Top two tide hunter. Going for the pipe build to be able to counteract versus that Phoenix as well as the Tinker in the upcoming fights. GH, farming bottom. He's got defensive wards on his side too, so he sees the rotations. And that is a circle drawn out by Yapsor, so I think he's expecting that there's vision down there because of the invasion plays from Liquid earlier. On control. Just about to hit on the level 12. To my man, infest, back Best up. Time. Yep. Immediately looking for action once again. They know someone's going to want to get that bounty rune. It is mid one. They're going to jump in, look to close the gap. Mibon trying to hold them back, but with two heroes chasing him, he's going to need some backup, and backup is inbound. TP's coming in, he'll drop down the field. Supernova's there on the sidelines, though. Mibon, he will fall. Ice Blast comes in over to Mutuma Man, but still with the rage, ready to fight. He's tried for it, but the Ravage comes in. Fada holds him back. And Mid one actually claiming the double kill there as the final tick to the flux of the race gets the kill. So a two for two exchange. Yeah, that Tempest double being able to affect on the Phoenix Egg coming into play right there. They may have been able to kill it anyway with Titan AA, but that was a level 12 Phoenix, so that is the level 2 Egg, and they brought it down quite easily. Desolator complete for Matuma Man. Pipes there for Fada. Level 15 on the Tide. Experience through the roof for Fada. Incredibly even game, though. 16 to 14. The gold advantage is actually pretty much zero. It says you know less than one K per secret, but it's been like bouncing back and forth between the two. And as we see the network or the experience as well, two K only for Liquid. Kaya next time a choice for Miracle before he goes for that Aghanims. Maybe he goes for the Aether Lens as well. That's like the more standard build that we've seen. I've seen Miracle though from time to time go for just like the Dagon right afterwards if he starts snowballing with momentum. Look at Midwin's next item choice. Okay. So he can maybe try to avoid the Icarus infest bombs. Yeah. It's been a big problem for him. It will continue to be a big problem for him. He's trying to be in a very nice for the escape. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does need something to save himself from that. Yeah. Secret all in a very defensive stance, but they are under vision from Liquid putting a very sneaky ward. And Secret still prioritizing it on the extremely defensive manner. They can't really push towers with their lineup until the Lone Druid gets more online. So all three of their wards are pretty much placed just to defend their jungle, to make sure that the Arc One and the Lone Druid can get their item timings. Because as the panel mentioned, it is a fairly greedy draft coming out from them with these two heroes combined on the same team. Scan comes out. It actually does catch Liquid here. They are positioned here for an Infest Bomb. They're going in anyway, though. They are straight in. Looking for Mid One. Mid One gets the field down. They've got the first strike of the air coming through with the ult. Matuma Man rages. He's able to finish out Mid One and the Tempest double. Supernova's falling low. Puppy nearly able to claim it, but he can't quite. Mind Control gets the ult off. Raise out onto the Puppy. Pipe comes through from Fada. Is it enough to say Puppy? It is. And Mind Control swoops forward, takes down a second, and now Fada's in trouble. He's surrounded. Brown the tree line. Three members down on Secret Yaps. Or tried to jump in, but the silence was still on him, so he couldn't react has to back away. Liquid get three. They're trying to take advantage of the greediness from Secret's lineup. They know there's no Radiant hit on the bear, so Secret taking these head-on engagements is still very, very tough, even though they have the Blink Dagger on Sankey. I think the Epicenter was actually cancelled there by Kuroki's Winner's Curse. And... That savage roar there. Miracle was trying to close in for the last bit of burst to finish the bet, and his own are off. That roar saving his life. And the Radiance is back. And Tuma Man's got his eyes on Yapso. Goes for a quick sandstorm, but the sentry's down. Ready to chase, ready to burst with the splinters coming in from Kuro. Liquid starting to really amp up the pace, mm -hmm. making all the space in the world for Miracle's Tinker. Phoenix in this game is actually going to get very, very strong 
Miracle top. He's getting chased out here by the Radiance, but he's in a very deep spot. Ah. He can't blink. He didn't expect that Radiance. It's only just come out. The rest of Liquid, though, coming in for the defense. I don't know Miracle can get through this one. Mike Drummond to my man Turner. Oh, he gets the blink off. Miracle, he's going to live. He managed to blink out just in time, gets himself out of the range of the Spark Wraith, and Secret, they've lost two. They do get the Ice Blast down onto Matuma Man, and they get Mind Control. So this time, Secret able to buy back pretty hard. They'll surround Kuro. Kuro, could he get himself out of this? GH trying to get a look in onto Ace, but Kuro in a lot of trouble. Ace brings the bear back through. Kuro trying to fly himself away. Ravage actually comes out from Fada as he looks to lock down the Nine Stroke as well, and he does find him. Miracle jumps in desperately, looking to finish off Ace. In fact, they do get him. GH able to get the final Void to kill off the Lone Druid. He'll almost certainly pay with his life if Yapsa and Puppy can find him. He's looking for the Dukes in the trees, still alive for now. But they do spot him out. He silences the Sand King, but with three heroes there, GH will fall as well. So they get the two cores, Liquid. They get both Ace and mid one, but it cost them four lives. That could have costed them everybody. Miracle gets yeah. the rearm blink in between the Radiance ticks. Very impressive stuff coming out from him there. But yeah, everybody else paying the price. Oh, yeah, Secret, definitely the ones to be happy with that. Yeah. Shrine up. Keep themselves good to go. Fada, level 18. Tied absolutely massive. Keeping on par with the farm of the Midas Radiant Slow Druid. The, the mid one Arc Warden that has two Midases effectively. It just goes to show how farm Fada is at this stage of the game. 23 minutes in. Yeah, that is that is really something. My control continuing to be infested at all times. Just stalking mid one. Midwin has gone for four step instead of that blink dagger. And the next item okay. will be Hex to try to deal with that uh, Tinker in the next in the next fight just to catch him out. And so like we mentioned, it's only Ravage and Sanking Stun as their disables. And GH has queued up a four he has done finished his four step and he will be going for Aghanims next on the Night Stalker to find that Arc Warden, as well as the bear in more than likely. And I mean Sanking, just always having that vision versus blinking heroes is nice with the urn. I mean, this is, is Ace going to go for double Midas? I saw him queue it yeah, up, he's... and I was like, huh. I, don't, I really don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the past, there was a, people used to do it. It is turning into a bit of a farm game. I mean, it's 20 to 20. There's been lots of kills, too. But yeah, it is going to... Maybe he's jealous that Midborn gets to use, too, you know. Maybe. He doesn't want to get left out. We'll see. We'll see what he does put that money into. My control is going to have a really good timing on this uh, Shiva's, which is very good versus both Arc Warden and Lone Druid in combination with Fire Spirits. And he chose for the Fire Spirit DPS too, that talent. Hell of a lot of damage coming in from him. I'm waiting to see if he does buy that minus. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, going to be interesting. He's, he's got it queued up. up. He's but close but to the money for it. Normally we really expect what well, the Assault Crash to be born into, but... Maybe they just want to play the farm game, and at the end of the day, if that's what's going to happen, two Midas are better than one. I think he wants the AC, though. No, no he actually buys the it. Midas. All right. Oh, my God. As I say, he's, he's jealous of mid one having two. Four Midas is two heroes. <laughs> that is some balance. They want to take this game to the super, super late. Yep, they saw that the last one went 70 minutes, and they're saying, we'll do that again if you want. Okay. Midas into Radiance into Midas. <laughs> Coming to pubs near you. Wow. The farm is going to be real. The question is if, uh, I mean, can Liquid really step up and punish this? Because the problem is, if this does go on and on and on, this lifestealer surely falls off in comparison to a late game Arc Warden and Lone Druid. Yes. Tinker is a big factor, the, though. Yeah, the Tinker's the always going to be a big issue yeah. stalling the game. The fact is, though, that at one point, yeah. can they deal with the split push coming out from an Arc Warden and a Lone Druid? It will be very difficult for them. I have to see, indeed, as it stands, 2020. 2k lead liquid and this 26 minute mark. Yeah. No one really yet to look in for Roshan. Not just yet, but liquid do have the chances to go for it with that desolator on Matu. So Agonims was the finished on Miracle. Queued up the Dagon following. So the team fight from liquid is very, very strong as long as, as, long as they don't get clipped by huge ravages from Fado or epicenters from. Yapsor, and Secret has been continuing to play on the very defensive. I haven't really seen them go for too many offensive plays. It's been very reactionary Dota and Liquid again. All grouped up. A 
And maybe now Secret will make their move. They have a smoke and they actually are bringing mid one in as well. But Liquid at the same time are smoked up. Infest is ready. Shiva's as well on my control. They're claiming the high ground here. Who's going to get the jump on who? Yep, so heading over. Kuro just moving out of range. They, they see mid. They see Ace in the mid lane. They're going in. They are. They're trying to move in straight away onto mid one. Supernova comes out. Secret having to split, having to back up. Mid one forces himself away. GH finds the rage for the void. They'll close the gap onto the arc. Quarter Ravage comes in from Fada though. He's keeping mid one alive. Mid one still trying to back off. And mid one, can he live? No, he can't. GH will be able to chase and finish it off. But they lose Matuma Man. Liquid moving in for more though. They've got the numbers. They've taken down three. Only Fada and Yapsaw left alive on Secret. Eyes onto Yapsaw looking to juke it off with the Sandstorm and Burrow Strike will make it up to the high ground, but GH, Miracle Mind Control, they're, they're diving into the base. GH, he's got to back off. A little early to dive behind the tier threes, and he will slide himself out of the base. But are unable to chase him down, but Liquid getting what they wanted done there. Sure, it cost them a Timber Man's life, but finding three heroes and uh, the chase as well from GH, keeping just consistently locked down on Arc Quarter, making sure that no matter how many four stars he can do with himself with the Tempest double, Mid one cannot escape the clutches of GH. Yeah, Liquid is extremely happy with that fight. The fact that they win a fight into Ravage and they don't allow yeah, sort of really have too much effect in the fight. He hasn't been able to get an epi soft, epicenter off in at all. I don't think we've seen too many, if any. Just them always starting the fight onto Secret. Matu does die though. That is the one one gain, and he's actually queued up a BKB. He's getting sick and tired of getting disabled after his rage. Bit bit of a deviation from his usual build. Sure. I think, if anything, though, that just sort of symbolizes. They've seen the double Midas. He just wants to get, as you say, that extra magic community so they can just force the issue even more yeah. and shut down this game before Mind control it bottom. turns into a big old farm fest, but they aren't going to have mind control to do so for a bit. He tries for the TP out, but three heroes to claim the life. DD rune on Matu. He's actually just walked into the pit. Yep. They're going to go for the Roche, and A Blast is flying toward it, though. They have a sentry, so they do see it coming in. Tomamas! A little low! And uh, he... Yeah, we okay? We'll come inside uh, GH for protection. Yeah. That so, was... He was pretty fortunate he didn't have the armor on. But yeah. they, did, they did see the blast coming in with that sentry ward that they had outside the pit. Oh, miracle. He's going for Fada here. The combo. He's doing well with the burst. See if that pipe's going to be enough to save him. Fada is going to get spotted out. Miracle blink on point. He's just about got the vision, but Fada with the jukes. Actually making it up to the north. And that's going to mean the is. liquid... They're not gonna find him, he blinks up, TP's away, nothing to hold him back, Fodder will escape, and look who's moved into the pit, Secret at there. As soon as Liquid, their attention's drawn away from this era by Fodder's fancy footwork, the rest of Secret get in and claim the Aegis for mid one. Space created. Some scary items coming out as well from mid one. Next item, of course, looking to be the, the Orchid. So he himself has that extra catch against these heroes that are heavily reliant on their abilities to escape. Yeah. Tinker, Phoenix, Lifestealer. If they can't get those spells off, they're in a lot of trouble. Down bottom, Yapsa and Fada. Finding to jump onto GH. We'll get himself out of the range of the Ice Blast. And I've got yours to set up for more, but no, they're already backing away. They see it. Yapsa, he doesn't want any part of this. He's already out of it. And Fudder will start to retreat as well. Miracle. Oh, Ravage. as he gets caught, though, Fudder, he knows he's there because the March positioning coming through, jumps in, finds Miracle, and Miracle's down. Secret getting a big pick. They had a ward on the high ground there, too. They do have the Tinker Ward set up. So, very nice play there from Fada, taking yeah. advantage of that. And Miracle will almost certainly know for sure that that ward's there and yeah. be unlikely to make that, that play in that position again. Yes. I clicked on Lone Druid and I saw he has a four step as well. They're really just trying to get themselves away from that infest bomb from the uh, Phoenix as well as the Life Stealer. I mean, if they can distance themselves from the uh, from the egg as well in a lot of those fights, if they're unable to kill from the fire spirits, then that can work quite nicely for them. Mid lane, yeah, finds the jump. And with the Orchid, uh, is very little promise for this when surviving in. And that's with the forces they can save him. They're dragging about with the Sunray as well. Mind control, allowing Kuro to survive. He will turn. Still the right clicks with that Maelstrom from mid one, doing a lot of damage to Kuroki. He does escape. Liquid able to retreat. And everyone out of there with a the backup from mind control. Very nicely healing them up with that Sunray. Matu doesn't want to take fights till he has that BKB because of these disables. And with the Orchid now too, this is like the perfect itemization from Matu. Here we go, onto the tier two, in the mid lane, onto the other side, Japsa finds the jump bar strike, onto GH. 
Trolling him with the Yules, there's the silence, the damage from mid one and the bear, more than enough. They'll take a kill, Mind Control has been to a man inside, they'll swoop forward, they have the Supernova trying to go for this. Can they get the kills out of it? They'll look towards the bear, bear being brought low, not enough to take him down. They'll pop the Aegis once on mid one, mid one forced back. He'll be able to get himself away, Fada moving in, doesn't have Ravage though. He won't be able to pop it, Secret keeping everyone alive, they do lose that Aegis, they will be able to blink the bear out in time. And they do end up getting the tier 2 tower. Yeah, Liquid claims themselves that Aegis kill, but very hard to get any type of chase kills afterwards. Matu just gets instantly anchor smashed in every single one of these situations by Fada. And, yeah. I mean, look at Fada, level 22 in this game, highest level in the game. The next two are 21 Lone Druid, 21 Tinker. He's really keeping up the pace with them there, and AC will be the next item of choice onto the bear. And needing that, really needing that armor versus the life stealer. And I believe that is the BKB finished up for Matu. And then he'll go for that AC standard build, more than likely, that we do see from him. Miracle's got the Dagon 2 on the way toward Dagon 5. And Kuro has gone mech, so Kuroki's actually getting, like, the two supports on the side of Liquid are farming very heavy in this game. Recognizing what type of game it's going to be. Very farm intense. Bottom lane. Miracle trying for a bit of burst onto Fad. Forcing him out, shoving the lane in, keeping the pressure on on these side lanes. Mm -hmm. Dim D. 24, 23, 33 minutes. Just a 1k lead for Secret. Zero Ops wards on the map from either team. And look what's finished on Mind Control. Uh huh. The Agonims. You know, to grab his teammates and save them. That could come into big play here. Especially what, because you can infest someone and then you can grab both of them, right? Mm -hmm. We'll see if some clutch stuff comes out. Can backfire. It can we have seen backfire. it before. But with, I mean, this is, a, this is an old classic combo as well. The Winter's Wyvern plus Phoenix. If you get a Phoenix egg out oh, and yeah. he curses, that egg is going to go off every single time if they do it properly. Let's see what they can do. The farm game's still strong. Ace, mid one, and Miracle, all very even in net worth at the top of it all. This is what we expect from this, these two teams, right? Being here in the grand finals, a so very, very close, close game. The level of skill between these is, uh, teams has got to be so tiny. They're, they're absolutely up there on the, pretty much the exact same plateau as it feels. Yeah, and it really comes down to execution, that no matter what stage of the game between these two teams. The Secret are going to make that move. They could do have the high ground. No vision for Secret up there. Have to be very careful how they approach this. Liquid's been hanging on to their wards for a very long time. Kuroki has four Ops wards. Secret has started to place a couple more of their actual Ops. One in the river. Absolutely is trying to hunt for Miracle there. Comes in with the, the Burrow Strike. And Miracle already out. You have to try and shove this bottom lane back crown. Miracle's just consistently keeping it press, pressured in. They both kind of have that aspect though, right? Like mid one with boots of travel, senses yep. Tempest one area, Tinker goes to the other side. Both trying to kind of avoid fights in the meantime, just waiting for item timings. Matu really wants that AC, he's still a bit away, but now they do have Aghanims on the Night Stalker, so that's just, that seems like it's go time, and it is. And Fest comes out. They're looking to take fights. All the secret, though, in a very defensive stance. Let's see what they can find. Liquid, how deep do they want to go? It's all very scary for them. Real lack of vision from uh, each team on the opponent's side of the map. It's also just kicked into daytime, and they don't have darkness for 30, so I don't know if they really want to try to take those fights when they have Aghanims on Night Stalker. Because that's going to be a lot of the damage coming in from the Tinker. With that vision from Night Stalker, they can just throw constant rockets and lasers. Still trying to clean up that Tempest Stumble bottom, but it does time out. And Bloodthorn finished up on mid one. So it has slowed down quite a lot. It was 20 to 20 quite a long time ago. Both teams heavily prioritizing the farm game. Yeah. And we're starting to see a little bit of the problem that could, uh, could just grow out of proportion for Liquid. The fact that. This farm time is always going to be hard for Matuma Man to keep up on the life stealer. Yeah, it's just with the, the fact that you're against two cores with double Midas is it's it's very hard to do, and especially because he's spending a lot of time inside mind control. Yep, they need to find the action liquid. 
Pot is on the high ground here. GH with that Aghanims, he does see all of Secret here. Oh, here we go, ready to jump. They come for immediately, but the Ravage from Fada comes out in response. They get the Silence as well onto the Phoenix. Ice Blast is coming in. They'll force the Phoenix out of the sideline. Mind Control Tickler, he gets the chance to pop the Supernova. Wow. Secret have to back away. Miracle trying to go for the chase onto the Tide. If Fada was ever so low, but he does manage to get himself out to safety. But they get Ace. Ace is not going to be as fortunate indeed. Miracle jumps in with the final laser. The last bit of mana left in his tank, enough to claim the lone druid. That, that my cue, my control to going for a Lotus Orb next. That was extremely scary from that Bloodthorn usage onto him. He almost does not get the egg off. But with that vision advantage from the Nightstalker Agnum, seeing everybody on the high ground there, that was Ravage committed and Secret got nobody. All about the vision game in these kind of team fights. Bottom. Now they will be able to claim themselves this tier two mid. Straight down bottom, bring the Tempest double in. Looking to claim a tier two. Mind Control's there with the defense. Force them back. That's actually an Ice Blast inbound onto Mind Control. Won't be quite enough to kill him. It will force him to back off to base. But to my man hunting down Yapsaw. Yapsaw backs up into the safety of Fada's arms. A little fire. Next choice for mid one so we can have that, you know, what we like to call kind of a doom, yep. pseudo doom. With those two items, the, both the blood worn, blood thorn, and that. And now some biggest nightmare points. for a tinker player. Those yeah. two items. So Night Sucker is going to go for the Lotus Sword for his teammates, and okay. my, my control is going to go for an Agonims instead. Wanted to get a bigger item. For oh, refresher. Uh, refresher. Sorry, yeah. So, man. Matu, almost AC finished. Very, very close to that yeah, one. Fada actually jumping in onto Miracle. Yaps was there with the one with the Boros Strike, Fine. and that's going to be Miracle Bursted. Just gets deleted as he sits outside the base, allowing Secret to get the quick jump on him. And now, Secret seeing if they could chase down for more. They'll turn towards Matumba Man again. Yaps up with a two man burrow strike. BKB comes through from Matumba. Turns, tries to fight up against the bear, bringing it down low. The Sunray percentage base damage also helping, but it's not quite enough. They'll get the bear back. Matumba Man and the rest trying to retreat, but again, Yaps up. Uh, second burrow strike. Oh, there's the save! They'll pick up Matumba Man, protecting him. Winter's Curse also holds back the rest of Secret. And now they'll dive in. Mind Control sweeps back through across Secret. Nice little play there, picking up Matumba Man. And the Absor, he's still looking for more. Jumps in with the strike onto this Winter's Wife, and they'll force him back. Again, the Savage Roar from Ace, shoving this Phoenix out of the fight. Cold Embrace is there for Kuroki, but Mind Control surrounded. The Cold Embrace will not be enough to save the Firebird. Now lose a second does cost them Yapsaw's life, but those plays that Yapsaw gave, getting them two cores. GH looking for Puppy there, but he's got to get out. He might actually be chased down here. They get the Spark Wraith on him. Can they close the gap? Maybe a little too speedy. He has a gem too. He's got to get out of there. He cannot die with this gem at this moment. Fada TP. In. Yeah, coming in with the wraparound. Fada blinks forward. He's got the Shiva's Guard slow. GH. Continue with the retreat. Looks like he's just a little bit too elusive and he does manage to escape. But I mean, that whole series of events really just going down to the positioning of Miracle a little bit off there, very yeah. close to the base, while I Secret are all, all ready to jump from the high ground. I think Liquid has to be pretty thankful that they didn't lose more in that situation there because they could have gotten chased out very heavily and lost a ton there. But only actually losing one more hero after Miracle dies. Yes. And it, I mean, it really is crazy how close these three cores at the top are. It's literally yep. two, like 200 gold in between Miracle, Mib 1, and Ace. Pretty much identical in GPM as well, those three cores. Yep. That's, that's quite some maths. What a close, close game indeed. But once again, I think people after game one were sort of wondering, are we really going to get more of it? And so far in game two, we certainly are. A skill level Miracle's of, uh, got a very scary rune in his bottle right now on okay. top of that Kaya. He has that arcane. Oh, that's the dream. This is really the dream. He's getting very close to that level 25 as well. See what they can do. Fighter on the front. Does have Ravage available again. They've got the darkness. GH going in with the silence. Mind control sweeps for They find Puppy. Puppy's down. No AA for this fight. They're trying to move in for more liquid. Mid one's there with a the response. They've got the control. The Bloodthorn as well. Down onto GH is enough damage with the Spark Grave. GH is down. Matuma Man moving in with the BKB going straight for the Arc Warden. Cuts through mid one. He's looking for the Tempest double as well. And he'll get it. Both of Arc Wardens down. And they're Ace not segregated. even done. They're finding Ace as well. Buyback comes out from mid one. But Matuma Man's already got the triple kill. Mid one has got to be seriously 
careful about how he reinitiates on this, and indeed he won't. He'll hold God. back, even with that buyback, he just can't get in there. Miracle's got regen on top of Arcane. Oh. He's just gonna take over. He's gonna push out every single side lane with ease, and now that's the Roche that Liquid is looking for here. Ace is not back up. He does have buyback available, but does not want to have to expend it. They've got to be very careful. And mid one had to use his Yeah, they, they can't let mid one drop up top. Yep, so far, do they find the catch onto Miracle? Can they bring him down with the Ravage? They certainly can. Miracle gone. He's out for 100. They can't finish the Roche. They can't. They've got to back away without that Tinker to protect the area. Perfect trap coming out from Secret. Even though they don't have the Lone Druid, oh, and it would, to find it. It would be the dream for Secret if they can get that Aegis onto mid one after he buys back. Yeah. The team fight's still very scary from, oh. from Liquid. And look at mind control. They may be ready to go for some sort of sneaky play. Secret know this though, they're smoking up, they're trying to move in from the sidelines. Mind Control will reveal himself with the Sunray, move down to the low ground, they'll find Kuro first. Moving in straight away to the Wyvern, Ice Blast comes in, Mind Control and Matuma jump through, and then instantly they take down the AA. Matuma Man and GH surrounding Yapso, Yapso gets the blink off in time off the back of the Yules, he's getting out of there. Miracle looking to chase, the mini stun of the rocket, slowing him down a little bit, jump forward again with Miracle, but the Sandstorm from Yapso dukes out the rocket. He continues to go down with a Burrow Strike, Miracle finds the burst, he gets the range, takes him out, they'll find the Tempest double as well for sure. They needed that buyback from Miracle. They don't want to give up that Roche by any means, and now they can try to make their way back into the pit. Yaps are dead for 70, and the Secret doesn't want to contest this when Midwin does not have buyback available if he dies again. They see Fada farming as well with their ward, with their ward on the high ground. So this one should be a bit more free. It does cost the buyback, but absolutely worth it. Miracle next. Queuing up the BKB. Uh, this itemization, I really like it from Liquid from both Miracle and Matuma Man just getting these BKBs. Yeah. They want to keep this game at the pace it is. They know that at the moment they still have relatively good control of it. Secret have gone for the greed play with this, this late game prioritization with the Lone Druid and Arc Warden. And if they keep this pace up, they may just be able to punish it. But it is so hard with how close this game is. Refresher Orb now picked up for Fada. The double Ravage will be there for the next defense. Ace has uh, Aghanims now too. And we've seen what he can do with Aghanims Lone Druid can push out the side lanes a lot harder, take out the towers while Liquid is pushing in the side lanes. And he's already gonna start pushing in that bottom lane. Getting ready outside the base, Liquid. Still that big, big issue for Secret is keeping mid one alive. How long are we seeing still until he has that buyback back? It's still five minutes, but the same thing, same to be said over on Liquid. Still six minutes till the buyback will be there once again for Miracle. Both mid laners having to be very, 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 very cautious. Yep. Miracle does have Aegis though. Sure. It can be a little bit more risky. So the g only gem in the game is still on GH because they did recover it when they killed the Absolute in that top lane. I'm gonna try for the bear here. At least GH leading in. The rest of the team coming through. Mid one will TP onto the bear here. He's gonna try and send in his Tempest double to do some damage. Bring him down low with the Absolute jumping in with a Burrow Strike. Ice Blaster passed over. GH will pop. Secret get one, and they're looking for more. Fada jumps forward, he has the Ravage to catch our Miracle. As you say, he's got the Aegis. The question is if they can bring him down twice. Supernova coming through. They're trying to put a stop to Secret, but Secret, they'll be down on the sun. Can they take it out in time? They can't. They'll pop the Refresher, but the Supernova Stone catches them all. Ravage comes in from Fada. They've caught Miracle again. Miracle in a lot of trouble. Winter's curse, curse for Kuroki. He's trying to buy space for Miracle to get out. It's enough. Miracle's able to blink himself away. Midborn gets in. He finds the Bloodthorn. Jump for Yapsor. Gets the two man burrow strike. Miracle's down. Kuro side this up as well with the Bloodthorn. The BKB out. As Matuma Man is trying his best to redeem this fight, but Lee Liquid, they've lost three, and Matuma Man surrounded as well. Yapsor again, another Burrow Strike holding down the Life Stealer. They'll beat into him, and Matuma Man slowly but surely should fall. He's getting the cheese back into his inventory. He does have the cheese. He's trying to turn towards Yapsor, but Yapsor slides himself away. My control comes back in. Matuma Man is actually going to survive it all. The cheese is enough along with the heart. Wow. To keep that man alive, but still Liquid, they lose three. They oh. lost the Aegis on Miracle, they lose him again. But with Matuma Man surviving, they should be okay. I'm pretty astonished he could just stand in the middle of all of them like that with his heart. Look at the damage coming out from mid one there. I think my control, I don't know if he was, he tried to get the Echoist Dive and the grab on the I wondered if he was trying to grab there, the Tinker. Right? Uh, and it looked like it just missed it. Yeah, I think he was just out of range. He was, I think he was like one hit from dying too inside of that egg. But we'll it's just, I'm gonna see it again here. Cause it did look like he tried to do it here. So we're gonna see the long Icarus Dive come out here. He does look like he didn't get it. There were pings on that egg. Yeah. Well, I guess that was from Secret there. Get that. Get rid of this egg. And indeed, th that refresher from Fada 
doing everything yeah. to get Miracle a second time. Great, great attempts by the save from Kuro. And Miracle, it nearly looks okay, but Midborn being able to force in, close the gap, get that silence, and Yap Sword. The finishing Burrow strikes in this fight were absolutely phenomenal. Mid one ends up surviving with, what, 60 HP there? <laughs> but some of man just not dying here. That's pretty ridiculous how beefy that man is. And mid lane coming in to put a stop to this. Oh, they get the silence, they get the bonus track onto the Phoenix. The oh, the Ravage as well. Phoenix is down, he has to buy back straight away. Fado moving into the base. But Tumba Man turns his attention towards him. The Winter's curse. curse holds back. Mid one, he's getting beat into by his own teammates. Will he go down the Splinter's Blast? Is it enough? He forces away the pipe. It will save him. Mid one will live. Matuma Man with the BKB moving forward, trying to chase down this Tide. But Tide, Fado gets the blink off in time. The bear's going to be the new target to focus on. On the back lines of it all, Yapsor gets the, he gets the ultimate. It's enough to bring down the Tinker. Tinker down for 100. But they're still backing off. Secret so have to be careful. The bear will go down. Matuma Man gets the kill. Oh, Miracle with back-to-back -back deaths there. Yapsor with the epicenter on top of him. Yapsor coming in so clutch here in these last few engagements. And again, that, that whole, I mean, Mind Control did need to buy back. Yep. And it is 80 seconds without Tinker. But, I mean, Matumba man, this bit, the Assault Karas and the Heart just doing so much for him. As they, they are just really struggling to actually beat this man down. You know, I, yes. I kind of worried was worried about how well the Life Stealer would pair up at the end of it all, but he is doing a lot. He has kind of hit his critical mass though. He can replace the armlet as the next item and get like the moon shard and stuff, but he's getting to that point where he is maxed out. Hits level 25, that range duration is going to be very useful in these fights. So I'm lane GH. Gets himself outside of the range of the ice blast. Fada's got the refresher shard. So my man's looking towards Fada. And we'll be able to walk it off. Secret now fully outside the base of Liquid. There's 35 seconds, no miracle. And one shoves in with the Tempest double, Matumaran rages, looks to take down that double. Number four staff keeping it alive for a little longer. Towards mid as well, they're cleaning out the wave. As a bit of split push was coming through from the bear. Secret in wants to get up top. Yapsor finds the burrow strike. Shed onto GH. Jafada trying to chase with the Shiva's guard slow. 15 seconds and Miracle will be back. Liquid doing their best to hold until their Tinker can return. There's the first Ravage, Ravage jump forward. He's got the second one ready if needed. They find the jump immediately onto Matumba. Oh, the save! Mind Control comes in with the Aghanim Supernova, picks up the Life Stealer, and with that Secret out to back, Miracle's coming into the fight. He's looking to get involved. Secret with a mass TPs as they just team TP out of this, and they will get away just in time. Liquid do hold. They keep the Tier 3 tower alive, and that, that, that was very, very close. That double Ravage nearly coming out, but Fada holds it off as the save was there in time from Mind Control. These, I mean, those saves are so clutch. That, uh, the Nullifier plus Bloodthorn really coming into play there. Matu just can't do anything unless his teammates can bail him out. Yeah, they have to have that Supernova play, and Mind Control's been doing it every single time. Yep. And he's, he's working towards Refresh Orb, as we were saying, and he's closing in on it. Mm -hmm. How's the levels coming on him too? Level 23, so maybe once he gets that I mean, this, the Sunray damage is a lot, but the Supernova count is probably the one that he'll take since he went this build, and it's so important that he yeah. s lives if he does grab his teammates. Shadowblade picked up, Ace did this in the past, throws it on the bear, all split push action for him. And GH will almost have that Lotus Orb, which will help bail out his teammates if they do get Nullifier. Why is moving in? I mean, he did pop the Refresher up in that fight up top, of the, and he didn't use Sentry the Rabbit, so he's got that second one ready. Oh, Sentry Ward down, they're looking for the bear here. They are. And they... Oh, we'll save it. Four staff comes through, Fada comes in. Save the animals, he says. And the bear is out. Good man. Gem coming out. As soon as they see the Shadow Blade. Yeah, they they're pick like, right, we got to get that detection yeah. online, boys. And we'll find the gem. Tempest doubled down again. It's a little bit of bonus, as always, for Liquid as they claim that. Double each and every time. BKB now finished for Miracle. Now he's finally a lot safer in these situations. Because yeah. Yapsor has been coming in clutch as well as mid one, getting those disables on him. He also has uh, buyback available in terms of the time. Still a little short on the gold, but a couple of kills. And, and uh, Miracle will have that second chance as well. So game sort of starting to reset again. 51 minutes already, 33 to 31. Liquid in a very defensive stance though because of those buybacks still. Yep. They might go for a smoke up here though with this refresher on my control. It is still time for another minute. They might wait for that night to kick in. We do have darkness available in eight seconds though. And the lanes are constantly being shoved in here by both the Lone Druid as well as the Arc Warden. So Liquid has a lot on their hands to deal with. 
pushing out these side lanes and almost brings down the bear. Oh, and he, yeah, does. he gets it. The Sentry Ward's placed in a very convenient position there by Liquid. Yeah, that Shadow Blade being dealt with very well by Liquid. There's no... Uh, he just resummoned the bear, so... Fada, quick TP's out. As she had already committed the Void. One. So this is the, the issue for Liquid, both this Lone Druid and Arc Warden doing very effective split pushing at, at very minimal cost for themselves. Third Roche is up. Both of them have, well, the AA has scouted it out now with the uh, Ice Vortex. And Secret heavily prioritizing, wanting to take fights around that Roche pit. Three wards placed kind of in the area to watch if Liquid does make their moves toward that Desolator. The next choice for Ace, same build that he went for the other day. Just be able to go for that rat. And nighttime has kicked in. Now it looks like this will be when Liquid goes for a fight. But they still have lane issues. And <laughs> Secret also brings this Roche down so damn fast. It is already dead. Refresh a shot. Ready for whoever wants to take it. Probably Fado. Yeah, triple man. Ravage. So get it over on that man. Puppy passes it off to him. There we go. Triple Ravage at the ready. Actually finding uh, the GH nice dock out. Oh, body control comes in with a save. Picks up GH immediately. Matuma Man with the rage trying to move forward. Miracle jumps in. Burst down mid one once. That's the age is gone. Refresher pop by mind control. He's ready for another supernova. Coming in, cutting them off. Up for the high ground. The Ravage from Fada comes through. That's the first one. He's low on mana. Has to back away. Winter's curse with Kuroki. Locking down mid one. His own team take him out. Secret have lost two. And Liquid are ready to chase for more. The bots coming in on top of GH. They've got their eyes on Fada. He does still have the pipe. Miracle looking for the Yapsaw Sanking instead. Japsaw slides down to the low ground, able to get the blink off. But two heroes down. They didn't commit the second egg either. They didn't. Mind Control's got that ready for the push, and they may have a good chance of forcing out the buyback from, from mid one arc one. He's down for 90 seconds. Bear just comes off cooldown now. He's used it right away. At the same time, though, there's still two they ravages right left. Oh, they go in immediately. Supernova slowing down Fado here. Matuma Man with the wounds, but Fado can still walk it off. As I said, there's that double ravage we've got to watch out for. It's going to be there. Fada comes in. There's the first. Catches four. And they're going to be able to get these kills. They look towards Mind Control. He tries to swoops down. God embraces there. Mind Control will be saved. He's able to keep himself alive thanks to the back of Akuro. They'll force back the bear. They're really trying to force this buyback. Fada does still have Refresher Shard. There's one more ravage. Doing everything he can with these to protect that buyback. Fada jumps in, but they do commit it this time. Buyback's through. We yep, absolutely a bit late with the Burrow Strike, with the Rage, Matuma Man's able to back off. But Liquid got what they came for, yep. they forced the buy back out. These fights are crazy. Everyone's starting to get... Everyone's pretty much getting to level 25, except for poor puppy. So, Winter Wyvern level 25, one of the cool ones we've seen a couple times. I think this time, he, maybe he goes for the Winter's Curse Duration. The Splinter Blast 2 seconds stun is what we've seen in the past. But the Curse could be absolutely massive with Phoenix. For him to always get the save off with the egg. And GH is the 8 second crippling fear yep. cooldown. He can get several silences off in the fight. Could be absolutely massive. He just chain silences up on that Tidehunter. But we do see Fada did itemize for that. He's gone for the BKB to deal with not only the silence, but the burst coming up from that Tinker. All this, this little bit of downtime, the cooldowns are going to be back available. You know, we asked for more. We asked for some more 70 We're minute getting, games. We are We're getting absolutely it. getting it here. Liquid on the prowl, though. It is still nighttime. Bada. More than fine. Look at the bear, though, bottom. He's on He's on a mission. Oh, he's in. He's trying to fight up against backdoor protection. The creep's not quite in range, so. No desolator yet either, so. He's a little close bit of damage. Though, Very close to having it. Mm hmm. Probably wants to save for the buyback just in case because of the way the fights have been going and because mid one had to buy back earlier. Miracle now on lane duty. In lane GH. We're gonna get a look in on the base, jump four from Fada. I really like that uh Miracle also went for the boots of travel too after that BKB. You saw it come into play there when he TP'd on top of GH in that last fight. And again, the bear towards bottom. Looking for this the back door has been disabled. Yeah, the creep's close enough this time round. Miracle's here though. Quick on the laser. Savage draws, he tries to peel the the Tinker away has to bring the bear back out. That laser causing issues. 
Yeah, and something you did point out, well, we did point out in the last game, is that the battle cry can only be affected if it's within a thousand radius, so he cannot apply that, you know, that magic immunity bear. And, and look at his solution to that, he's actually just picked up a BKB ice. Okay, onto that. the bear, right? Yeah, All so he right. can actually go for that. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. So that split bear getting very hard to deal with. No longer can Liquid just send back the Tinker to deal with it. BKB and he will be taking these tier 3s. Both tier 3 towers very low up top and mid bottom lane. Secret just in an incredibly defensive stance though with this buyback still on cooldown for mid one. They don't want to be able to get caught out of the base by any means. And this gives Liquid here a goes the bear. arm. They do ping it out. They saw the Radiance and here we go. That'll be a tier 3. On th He's got that BKB. He could get a lot out of this. There's the BKB. I'll take your range, Rax. The, uh, the backdoor kick back in now, though. But still, I mean, it, this is this is what Liquid have to be worried about. How do they deal with this sort of split pressure? They're gonna have to ward outside of the lanes now. Probably in probably the bottom lane more focused because it's been exposed. And okay, GH actually goes for the attack speed, the 140 attack speed. Instead, he wants to be able to scale more, I guess, in the later one. That's fine. So yeah, putting wards and sentries down in the uh, bottom lane to be able to watch whenever the bear does go for that. But they're going to have to commit a lot to be able to go for that bear. They pretty much need Matu there to be able to deal with it through that BKB. And what has Kuroki gone? He is level 25. He goes for the curse duration. Yeah, I thought so with the Phoenix this time around. It's been some really nice ones as yeah. well. One, Tempest double, finding the Tinker with another fire in the silence, but Miracle. Lotus Orb. Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, 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 it's a lot of damage! Oh. My control was like, I might use like about to jump in and go for him too. Yeah, the itemization of mid one being absolutely bang on. Not something that we, well, we have talked about it this game, but really worth mentioning just the addition of nullifier to the game. It's it's so good with our corner. It's so good versus Tinker as well. Refresher shard is still available. Oh, there's ready up top. And yep, they send it in top. And in we go. They do have backdoor. It's not enough to save this tower, Stop though. It. The bear just claims it. Now the backdoor protection's off. And the bear, it's again going to potentially get the range track. Fortification does come in. That's a glyph force, though. Oh, it is. Lone Druid causing so many problems for Team Liquid. As this they really can just rinse and repeat this secret. Yeah, this has to be frustrating, having that happen. When you have map control on the side of I Liquid. Mean, what do they do? They, they can't deal with a split, as it seems. They need, like, a Bissell or uh, something on Matu. Yeah, and it's very hard for them to just push down and try and end the game, because still there's this, there's this incredibly tanked Tidehunter walking about. Yeah. With a Refresher Shard, Refresher Orb, Triple Ravage is there. Good luck pushing into that if you're Liquid. He still lacks a bit of the mana, though. That's why you see him. He's itemized for a Hex next on okay. Fada because he doesn't have mana, actually, for the three. He barely has mana for the two. Unless it's with the Refresher Shard, of course, it's not mana required. Again, look at Ace, sending the bear in, Shadow Bladed, looking for bottom. The Warden Sentry <laughs> do see it, though. They do have the wards out now. Yeah. They're going to need some, like, either Hex or something on the Tinker and the Phoenix in order to just grab it and Hex it before it does get the BKB off, yep. or Matu uh, going for the Abyssal Blade to try to lock it down during those situations. A miracle very close to having a Hex. Yep. Really gonna need it. Coming up to the 60 minute mark once again. Two incredible games to start off this grand finals. Yep, so it was in a hex. As we saw just now, our quarter mid bomb picks up a BKB. So now both split pushes have the threat of this BKB committal they can use each and every time. He has a lot of lot more ways to actually save himself now too, because in the past he just forced tabs himself and that's unless his teammates are there to bail him out, he can get caught out quite heavily. And that's a that's a full refresher on Kuroki yep. as well. I haven't seen Kuro this farmed in ages. Double Winter's Curse with that uh, additional duration. Yep. I mean doubles Winter's Curse and also the Arctic Burn as well. It does a lot of damage late game. The They're dive comes in. out. Father's been jumped on, he pops the BKB. Backing off, has the Shiva's guard, but Superman look at the chase, but tied just a little too slippery. Will be able to get out of range, bottom lane. The rat is Comes on again. again. They're looking to get that bear in. They do want to try and wait until the, the backdoor protection is taken off. They saw it really quickly though with the wards, and you see like they keep having to put sentries and obs all outside their base to watch that. And does go for the supernova hit count. He'll get, the, he'll get the range at least. Yeah. This is so obnoxious. <laughs> So 
do they deal with this? Now looking mid one, even comes in too. They've got to just burst that down, chain hex it up. It's a bit low on mana, gets nullified. But, uh, actually, the Tempest double times out, so it doesn't even get the full Outside the base, Liquid will find a pick. That GH attack speed, that talent coming into play right there. The AA down. Oh, the bear bottom. gets it's the bear. Rats bottom. Oh, I I don't think I've seen ratting this painful in a long time. This is not since TI3. Yeah. This is uh, some some next level. Just impossible to deal with as it seems for Liquid. Yeah, Matu's itemized for a boots of travel now, so he can always TP back to go for that. But yeah, he really needs something to be able to deal with that one to deal with that bear. Grab it down. I think Abyssal will be nice because he can deal with the other BKBs on the yeah, other heroes as well. They found him outside the base. Spherical jumps. He gets the hex off. They should have the perfect control. No force and BKBs and time. Fada saved. Fada will get himself away. Yapsaw there with that force play. Making sure that he could get out of range before the second hex came through with a rearm from Miracle. The bear instantly runs toward the mid lane. Starts pushing oh. that one in. Going toward top to go for that explosion. The TPs are coming back. Everybody on the side of Liquid. They've got to be here for the bear. This is insane. What a game this has turned into. All about the bear. In it goes. And here we have it. In, onto the racks. He's gonna, he's he's gonna, gonna get, get it. it. It's, oh. Liquid, what do they do about this? I mean, they'll be made, they should be able to make the bear pay at least, but the racks are already gone on two lanes. And mid lane is, the tower is sitting at 100 HP. You see Miracle's ping and he's like, what? We have to defend this somehow, but they've got. The, uh, how can they? Is the question. GH actually cancels Fada's yep. TP. Again, he comes out immediately from Fada. It's going to be a fairly low duration one. Don't know if they can chase this though. Shiva's oh. guard from Fada. He's able to run out, get the blink off. He'll be fine. The bare bottom again. Matu draws a line bottom. He's like, we have to deal with our lanes being pushed in, so the back door can't be affected. If back door comes off, they're going to lose their base. They're going to lose the last few racks that they do have. Blip is going to be available again in about five seconds, but. The secret just seeming to be very comfortable with this state of the game. They I mean, know that they can just draw it out. Yeah, they're just sitting in their base and just having the bear do all the work. Yeah. They just send the Tempest double, ten send the bear elsewhere. And now Roche has spawned. Another refresher shard available. Fada still has the one from previously. And now has backpack backpacked his boots so that he can actually have the mana to, to use all three. DD spotted bottom, and the bear is continuing. It's it on its way. Yep, it's running <laughs> toward that mid tower. It's sneaking around there. No creep waves in range, so backdoor protection will be pretty. pretty it's only fine. 124 HP tower, though. He's going to be able to bring this oh, one down right. with ease. Oh, and now he goes for the range. And Liquid now they make their way into the pit, though. Okay. They really need to get this Roche at least to be able to try to. I think they need to just like go time after this. Make sure the side lanes are pushed out from both the life stealer and the tinker, and then boots to travel in for fights with the team. Look at GH with this DD. He's soloing the Roche as a Night Stalker support. Secret are on their way over. Yep. Can Liquid take it down in time? They should be fine. Ice Blast coming through. They're still heading in. We're not going to see GH head up, sort of try and block this one off. They'll back off if the Ice Blast does connect. Being the careful how they commit. Our Gordon's keeping in too. Oh, That's a the push D. Can Miracle deal with both of these? That's the question. He's got the Hex on to both. He's trying his best to deal with this split. They may find the bear, BKB's pop, the bear's still alive, he's going back up the racks, but he will get taken down. Oh, that's Supernova just in time, as Mind Control nearly falls to the control of the Tempest double. Back in towards to the pit, Fada's got his eyes on GH, Kuroki and Matuma Man still outside the side of it. Fada moves him with the Hex, drops it down onto GH, Secret going into the pit, Matuma Man pops the Rage, moving on to Fada, Fada pops the BKB, GH and Matuma trying to take down Fada, do they have the damage? Liquid, they need backup and they need an but look at the base, they've got the split push again, the bear it's been TP'd in. Liquid, they're having to deal with this Roche fight and the base. Oh my goodness. The base, they're going to be in a lot of trouble as well. They do manage to force it back out, back towards the pit. GH has been caught out, blown up by the Ice Blast. No Night Stalker for 100 seconds. Secret, they'll claim Roshan. Liquid just getting pulled apart as there is so much for them to deal with. And now the Wyvern's in trouble. Mind Control comes in with a supernova save, dodging the Ravage for both of them. Instant Refresher Shard used by the Lone Druid so he can actually have a bear since that second one did die in the mid lane. They're trying to retreat. Secret looking to chase. They've found Kuro. They should be able to find him. Hex, Nullifier, the uh, 
Silence from the Bloodthorn as well. They've taken down two. Liquid, no buyback on GH or Kuroki. Oh my god. And as you say, still with those extra ravages, butter pops. He pops one refresher shard. He has another one. Can Liquid really hold three against five? Wait, no, sorry. He popped his refresher orb. Apologies. This boss comes in. He's gonna pass over Matuma Man. Rage is popped. They look towards Yapsa. Fada pops the Ravage. But Matuma Man still with the Rage. Trying to fight. He's looking towards the Tempest double. But yeah, Miracle's been jumped on. He's down for 100. Buyback from him. Buyback from Mind Control. They're trying their best to hold. Matuma Man pops the BKB. But the Rack's are already down. Secret got what they came for. Can Liquid punish them? They'll try and push back Matuma with a Savage Roar. Matuma Man cannot chase Secret out of this. Yapsaw comes back in, looking for the burst Another right. Ravage. There's the second Ravage, he's called Miracle. This is going to be a dieback on Tinker. He's down for two minutes. Secret slowly but surely just breaking down Liquid in this game. And GG will be called Secret take game two as they lead this best of five grand finals two to zero. What a mentally draining game that must be. I took the words right out of my mouth right there. They were looking at a pretty good pretty good position when they forced a lot of buybacks there going for the pushes, but Ace with the Lone Druid, Arc Warden as well for mid one. Just constant siege. That has to be really taxing. Liquid. I mean, already that, the Lone Druid has been incredibly hot in, in terms of both these teams wanting to get their hands on it and even more so the importance of it right.